Hi guys, today I'm going to show you on what lately I was working on my game engine and how it was improved. I worked on various things like G-buffer and simple lighting, also multi-threading on the CPU and also I tried to multi-thread my Vulkan uh, backend and also I improved the UI uh, manager also added a functionality to create a new object in real time and I'm super excited to show it. So let's start. So now you can see the intro for the engine. I'm pressing escape and I'm able to start uh, work with the editor. I am able to select a scene. Let's start from the most exciting one, I guess, uh, because it has lighting and uh, you can move objects around. I need also to find a way to rework my selection and uh, moving of the objects because it is uh, sometimes very buggy and not precise. But still, I am super happy about the results. And now I will just show you how you can do stuff. So you can uh, change light position. Also in the level uh, file, you are able to spawn another one and uh, change the color and stuff like that. Um, also in the editor UI, you are able to, um, wait, yeah, you are able to uh, navigate over the objects in the scene, you can check their position, you can change the textures if you want. So for example, this is plain and I can change the uh, texture for that and it is very, very useful. Uh, yeah, so let's just change something. You can also update the object and uh, reload the... Oi, uh, and reload the scene and you will see that the object was rewritten, the information about it. Also other thing is that you can uh, still uh, select the animation, for example change the animation if you have this opportunity. Also don't mind this disappearing plane because I have a very very uh, simple calling added which now results in uh, sometimes objects are disappearing, but it is also something that I'm going to change in the future. So uh, let's just, before adding a new object, check out what else can this debug functionality provide. And for example, when I was working on the uh, gbuffer implementation, I realized that I definitely need some way to uh, fastly see the uh, output in the render targets that I am rendering into. So I've added this functionality. So this is like the main uh, debug pass. Uh, then we have albedo texture, we have normal texture. And I think it is totally crazy that I can visualize it like right now. Also the position map, and you can see that it is changing in real time, of course it does, <laughs> and uh, it is super cool. I have also mask uh, uh, visualization, which we, I am using to in order to create the outlines, and it is also super, super sick, I guess. But, um, yeah, it's super great. I love it. Um, also, the other thing is that you can change the some like small de uh, lighting parameters. We can make it like more dark stuff like that. Like change the direction of the direction light, and it is very cool. Um, also, of course, you can select the audio, but I already showed it before, and you can see some like information about like how fast. CPU thread, update thread is working, how many draw calls we processed. So when I, for example, um, yeah, you can see that um, when I'm not displaying the plane, the number of draw calls is less. So whenever I see only this, like we have three draw calls, I have no idea what they stand for, probably for the grid, but yeah. Uh, so this is this is it and also let's just check how we can add an object 
because it is a very cool thing. So I have a small like UI functionality for that. So we need to add a tag for the object. So for example, let's say test. The position will be 0, 0, 0. I will select the white color. I will choose from the existing models that are uh, that lie in my asset directory. I will select the material. And here we are, we have a, a cube and like literally almost a very, very cool real 3d editor with the bugs but still it is like totally cool that now i can create an objects and like i will do another one and you can see that they are also updated in this uh, object field which is like super cool i really love it and it it almost feels like I'm working with an actual real render software uh, and I will show you that I can like select another object like for example monkey and I will select a different texture and here we are and it is so cool for now it can only create a NPC type of object like uh, it won't be a lighting or something because I need to add some type of parameter of what type of object it will be but it is still very, very cool. Since my lighting was very simple in order just to test that I can actually do some lighting with my deferred rendering implementation, it now can look a bit incorrect in a physical way, but I still think it has a very, very huge potential, right? Like this is, this is weird, <laughs> these black dots, but yeah, anyway. Also, the other part that I was working on was related to the multi-threading and I had a benchmark scene test for that. And here I have like more than 2,500 animated models and it is uh it was like my test case in order to see how i am working with the cooling and uh how vulcan multi-threaded uh, command buffer recording works and it works i will show it in a while in the render doc how exactly uh Vulkan is processing multi-threaded command buffer recording and the idea here is also that now when we have like 100 draw calls uh, we can see that uh, CPU thread where I am updating the animation uh, transformations is working like on 9 milliseconds approximately and I have around like 30 FPS which is not nice but like it is something then I'm going further, I have like already, okay, it was probably 50 FPS because now I see 40. It has like 350 draw calls, yes. So it is fine, even though my fans are already like, I can, I can feel their work. And when I'm going further, I have no other optimization instead of the simple cooling. So we now see 7 FPS, 5,000 draw calls and uh, yeah, this is kind of hard for my engine for now, but it is also something that I'm going to improve in the future and it is very, very, it was very, very fun to work on it. So the way how I implement multi-threading on a CPU is a pretty much uh, general approach i created thread of pool of threads where i on the on the initialization i'm initializing the same amount like of uh, threads and then i am spreading it between the wor uh, working uh, quiz and executing the uh, task and uh, this is how i am updating now the uh, animation transformations and also uh, I'm using it when I'm cooling uh, my uh, geometry. 
and uh, the I'm not I won't stay here for long I will just want to show how it was done on the Vulcan part because it was uh, the most exciting part for me and the idea in uh, order to, to multi-thread your Vulcan is uh, you have to uh, have a primary command buffer and a secondary one you can't uh, multi-thread your main command buffer that's why you need the secondary command buffer and uh, you have to divide uh, object per uh, number of th threads and like i'm gathering the information what uh, particular amount of objects will go to e what thread and then i'm executing it uh, e in multiple threads and it has like absolutely none uh, effect on the performance uh, but but it still was very interesting and curious place to be, thing to learn and dive into. And I hope that one day I will be able to say that my multi-threading approach actually uh, influenced some uh, workflow, but not not today. And yeah, and just for your reference, I won't still show it how it looks in render doc because it's very curious to see, I guess. Okay, so I uh, captured the frame in render doc and you can see that uh, I have several uh, debug names for my passes to be able to navigate and what is going on in my huge project. And I am multi-threading on the G buffer because it is the pass when I'm processing all the meshes and writing it into the corresponding uh, G buffer textures. And you can see that here the uh, commands are being executed in 18 threads. And uh, so what you are going to see here is how secondary buffer of uh, my Vulkan backend is recording some amount of draw calls. Um, and then it is being like split. It is being added to my primary command buffer. So you can see that like some amount of objects are in, for example, this first uh, execution uh, work group, the other starts, the other one, and it is being like recorded the commands and then so on, so on, so on. And after that, uh, at the end of all these work of execution, it is uh, passing the this like secondary secondary uh, eight, 18 uh, secondary command buffers into the uh, main command buffer. Okay, I guess that's all for today, and I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And probably. My next goals are going to be to work on the bug fixing because I had lots of reports that people are unable to compile my program, which is not a surprise for me. Uh, so I will probably work more into this direction to have some like more stable builds. It is nice to have more stable builds. And yeah, so, and after that, I will probably return to some other like feature extension thing. So have a great week, everyone, and thank you for watching. Bye.